Will Bosey, uh, I want to talk about this guy because he's just went on a string of, of sends here in the state out west, Return of the Sleepwalker V17 that Daniel Woods put up, Sleepwalker prior to Return of the Sleepwalker and even suggesting a downgrade to that. Um, Aiden Roberts, uh, it sounds like, um, is maybe proposing somewhere in the V17 grade mm-hmm. for um, a, a boulder that he just recently uh, sent. What is it, do you think, that's that's kind of creating this just really top end like explosion in the bouldering world right now? Well, that's a really good question. I I think in some ways I don't actually see it as being an explosion mm-hmm. at the top end in the bouldering other than we've got a number of very well-known really well publicized boulder projects that people can go and try with a reasonable level of access that are everyone knows the beta everyone can get hold of the things they look like really good climbing they climb well they're not ugly nasty things tucked in the middle of nowhere that no one wants to go and try on some horrible rock um, or in really you know terrible conditions like well the uk and it's raining the whole time and it's come off the back of this funnel of climbers and say the sort of top 50 boulders in the world that have been operating at that V15 and 16, so 8C and 8C plus standard for a really long time now. I don't remember, remember if you remember the number of times it's been written on the internet where people go, so when's the, when's the ceiling going to be bust? When are people going to stop just establishing the world's 75th 8c like we've got so many of these why is people not climbing v17 why are people not climbing 9a and so i think in a way it's more been it just needed to step over a threshold people just needed to get confidence that the grade would stick they weren't putting their neck out too much in the line and that people could share beta and build replicas and work on these things and be a bit more sure about what they were trying so i think it's yeah it hasn't to me felt like an explosion it's just in enough elements all coming together to bring bring that reality in into the position that it is now and i think what we'll see now over the next couple of years is loads of people at that same who've done a lot of the 8c's and 8c pluses climbing either burden of dreams alfane um return of the sleepwalker and getting those things done and we'll then be saying in a few years time why has everyone climbed so many v70s where's the v18 and it'll be the same thing again oh god it's it's so interesting to think about kind of that critical mass like you're talking about where it's you know it's it you think it's just going to start to to build and, and if not become commonplace just become less newsworthy i guess you know like another send of burden or another send of sleepwalker maybe not so much with megatron i'm not sure how many people are making it out to that one besides drew ruana for you know 100 plus days but access you mentioned there and a sharing of beta was really interesting too because i had a conversation not too long ago with um stefano gizolfi who cited that more on the sport side when he was talking about excalibur but how critical it is um and, and how expeditious it is in a sense to be projecting something with others rather than Mm -hmm. try to lock it down and keep it your own because the, um, the progress can come so fast. And yeah, I'm curious your take on that. Um, it can be through this lens of bouldering, like we're talking about with Will and and Aiden and Daniel and some others, um, Sean, uh, with the sharing of beta, because it also does seem like ultimately you look at a problem like burden, for example, a boulder like burden, and now we're seeing like three or four different viable ways that it that it goes. And that's a boulder that seems almost like it's almost like a board. Like it almost seems like there should only be one way to climb it. But now you're seeing lots of different creativity around that. So how um, how much does the sharing of the beta versus uh, just other people doing it and giving you confidence that you can do it in any way, you know, come into play there, do you think? I, I think it's really critical, actually. All right, y'all, just a quick shout out here for today's sponsor, which is Rungni. Magnus Mitbo started this company. You know it. You've seen it. But why do I love it? Why should you love it? Well, first of all, their clothes are incredibly soft. They're so comfy. They just came out with this banger spring line of shorts and tees. And whether I'm climbing or whether I'm lounging, 
I just love how Roni fits. And then the other stuff they make is incredible. They're chalk bags. I'm so psyched on their chalk bags. They've got a magnetic closure that keeps the chalk inside, but it's also so satisfying to open and close. Premium materials. And then what goes inside that chalk bag? Magdus chalk. It's so good. Whether I'm struggling on the moon board or struggling on my project out on rock, that mag dust is keeping my fingers nice and sticky. You guys can check it all out at that link below and use code STRUGGLE to score 15% off. Let's go. And what it really tells you is that when you give something like the sharing, the information of how to do things or the camaraderie and the sort of the teamwork and support of projecting together, both of those things play significantly into the psychological aspect of the climbing. There, there's some, obviously some stuff around tactics as well. And so you see that benefit of the psychological aspect or com, contrib, contribution into performance. And then more and more people are climbing that grade. Um, so really, for anyone who watches that behavior at the top end, in a way, if they've got their own, you know, they're trying to climb their first V11, for example, or something that they've been spending quite some time on, just look at the behaviors of the pros who are suddenly all climbing at this same grade and try and replicate that into your own own life. So try and find, get on the internet and say, does anyone else, is anyone else projecting this thing as well at the same time? Or go out there enough that you see other people who turn up and do it and go, oh, do you come out once a week? Um, is Saturday your projecting day? Because if it is, like I'll bring some pads out as well and we could work it together. Um, or you, you know, ask other people around, uh, like you can post about it on social media and goes, is anyone else trying this project problem who's also only five foot four like me? And sure enough, someone will even tag someone else and go, yeah, I know so-and-so. They're really, you know, five foot two even, and they've got some really good beta. And then suddenly you get connected with these people and you share that knowledge, you share that psych, and and it really contributes. I mean, after all, it's what me and Pete have done for 10 plus years is this partnership thing where we actually worked as a team with things. And it definitely benefited both of us. We wouldn't have achieved what we've done on our own without a lot of those advantages. So I think it's a very usable thing for most people. Yeah, I really appreciate the perspective. And and there's just like such great stoke, um, you know, when when you get a crew that's out and and working. And I mean, that's where the send train comes from is like you can just kind of ride each other's like psych and and, and all of that. Uh, is there, um, you know, in, in a scenario where it's, uh, as we're going to be talking now with not elite climbers um, on, on this call in episode here, is there a scenario where um, seeing too much of how others are doing it, too much beta, whether it's YouTube videos or, or climbing with others, um, could suppress potential creativity or problem solving, you know, on your side, like when you're working with clients that, that maybe aren't at the cutting edge? I, th I suppose potentially, but it would be for everyone to try and keep a, a reasonably regular check in on that kind of curiosity element of when they approach their climbing. So one of the things that I try and stay quite aware of when I go climbing is, is my internal sort of calibration for curiosity high right now if I'm having a session. So I really notice it. It's really good when I first start working something and projecting an item like, oh, there's so many things I could do here and I want to try all of them out. But when I get further down the projecting process, that curiosity element goes lower but that's a mistake a lot of the time because it's then that you want to be able to check in and go wait a minute i should keep an open mind here is there something really crazy that could work even the perspective that you've got the sort of movement engrams dialed in and you've learned how to move between the holds and now if you start to think well i've been climbing this really statically what if i put something really explosive in and tried to skip a hold or skip a movement because i know how to latch that hold and i know how to use the feet and suddenly op doors open up for that kind of stuff if you can just think a little bit more out of the box. So I'd say the curiosity element is the one to keep in touch with. Or you could just flip it around and say, am I getting into a stubborn mindset? So if I, my partner, who I mostly go climbing with, if they were to turn up to the crag and say, uh, have you thought about using that hold way out to the left and trying a massive drop knee on it? Would my first answer be, no, screw you, I'm not doing this. I know what I'm doing. Or would it be, oh yeah, go, on, I'll just put my foot out on it. No, 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 it still doesn't work. But you've got that open-mindedness and I think that's good to keep a check on.